So today's lecture is on genetic equilibrium and other mechanisms of evolution. There we go. So other mechanisms of evolution plus population genetics, we're going to talk about some micro and macro evolutionary topics. So we're going to, should we skip this? Let's see. We'll go with it. A think about it question. Just something to think about, okay? There are certain alleles. What are alleles? Do you guys remember? They're like the big A and the little a, right? They're two different forms of the same gene, okay? So a big A or a little a that are lethal, right, will kill the organism when found in a homozygous individual. So, for example, if you're little a, little a, you may not survive, all right? Although these individuals will die before being able to reproduce, these lethal alleles usually still remain in a population over time, even in low quantities. Using your understanding of genetics and heredity, explain how this phenomenon could be so. So, for example, if little a, little a means you develop a disease that you die from very early, why would we still see some little a's in the population? What are the different allele possibilities? Hey, Zeus? Excellent, because they could be big A, little a, or you could be a healthy adult that's big A, big A, right? So this heterozygous keeps that little a in the population, even though this is a very sad <laughs> chance that you're taking. Nod your head if that makes sense. Kind of. Sure. If you're awake, nod your head. Excellent. Same answer. Okay. <laughs> so for the vocab that you need to know, you guys, I will, I'm putting together your quizzes for this and trying to make it very similar to the test, but I've noticed there is a lot of just vocab questions on the test. So make sure that you know the vocab words that we went through in chapters 15 and 16, okay? So we are talking about genetics again because everyone loves genetics, duh, right? So gene pool, the definition of gene pool is all genes present in a population. All the genes present in a population. Variation is how many different, how many different possible alleles there are for a trait. So variation and alleles, okay? For example, more variation, or uh, just remember that the more variation in a population means there's a better likelihood that the species survives, okay? That's what we talked about when we were talking about monocropping with Monsanto and stuff, is that if you plant all one variety of corn and all of a sudden there's this new superbug that's able to survive all the pesticides we put on it, if all of that corn's genetically identi identical, that beetle could kill off the whole crop, right? But if you have some genetic variation in your corn, there's a chance that one of those varieties would be able to stand against the beetle you wouldn't lose the entire thing, all right? Um, so that was the remember the more, did you guys see that variation? In a population means the better likelihood that a species, not the individual, the species will survive. Okay, so variation is created by, I don't know. I hate it when the notes don't match perfectly. Okay, so we'll just go with this. Allele frequency is the amount of an allele, such as big A or little a, found in a gene pool, and how frequently it is present. Okay, that's what allele frequency is. So are there a lot of big A's? Are there a lot of little a's? Are there mostly heterozygous? Are they mostly homozygous? So this is an example of the gene pool. Uh, you can see these different combinations, right? There's big B, big B, big B, little B, 
little b, little b, and all of those individual alleles, each letter from each organism contributes to the gene pool, the luck of the draw of those letters. So variation, here we go, is created by two main things that you need to know because these are on the test, okay? Gene shuffling and mutations. Gene shuffling is making a new allele combination, okay? Rearranging, making new combinations of alleles during meiosis and fertilization. So during sexual reproduction, right? Mutations are any change in a DNA sequence. And they happen constantly. Environmental factors can create it variation, but it's not heritable, so it's not a part of evolution, all right? So the main variation is created by gene shuffling and mutations. That's really important. Why is variation important to evolution? We can see these are different little slimy creature friends that are adorable. Here's our example of the peppered moths, right? Without that variation, what would have happened to all the peppered moths when all the trees started to get polluted. They all would have died, right? Instead of being able to blend in, we were just changing, okay? If you can tell there is an elephant in there, right? It's kind of hard to see. So obviously elephants are similar to that color because it helps them blend in, right? Can you even see what's in this picture? There's this tail, an iguana. That's like legit, right? Right there. Those are awesome. Okay, so we're gonna keep going for the sake of time, but these are just some self-check questions if you're studying for the test. This is something you might wanna go back and revisit so that you do great on the exam. So other mechanisms of evolution. So natural selection is one way that evolution can occur, but there are other ones, all right? Mutation, sexual selection or non-random mating, um, gene flow or migration, and genetic drift. So migration or gene flow... I want to make sure that we're on the right. So we know natural selection acts on variation. It acts on the phenotype, but results in allele, altered allele frequencies. And organisms with favorable traits contribute more significantly to the subsequent populations. So by nature, mutations alter allele frequencies by generating new alleles. Okay, a low frequency is normal. Mutations are an important source of variation within a population. This is what we already discussed, right? That's what we just talked about in the last few things. So migration, here we go, aka gene flow. Remember that evolution happens to populations, okay? Immigration, that's that first blank in your worksheet now, introduces new alleles. Immigration is when things are coming into the population, okay? If Ms. Holland's class walked over to our class, that would be immigration. They're joining us and they're bringing all their alleles with them. Does that make sense? Emigration is it removes alleles. Emigration removes alleles. So if all of a sudden I said, okay, we're going to cut the class in half. Half of you have to go to Holland's. Now the rest of you have to find a mate for the rest of your life and what's left of the class. That would be removing alleles, right? There are a lot less options. <laughs> okay. 
So the gene flow is the movement of alleles from one population to another, just like we said. Non-random mating, okay, is when you select a mate due to geography, so how close they are to you, or select a mate due to similar characteristics. Selective mating, okay. Usually females choosing males for their specific sexy traits, right? Like the peacock. Only male peacocks have the big pretty feathers and everything. Generally in nature, except for probably in humans, it is the female who chooses the male for mating purposes, okay? It's all up to the ladies in nature. Uh, and this isolates alleles from segments of the population. So non-random mating requires individuals to select a mate, select mate due to geography. Does that make sense? You guys see your notes? Geography or similar characteristics, which we call selective mating. This isolates alleles and segments of the population. So don't worry about it. <coughs> Bless you. Sexual selection, right? We talked about this in our movies, Why Sex and uh, Evolutionary Arms Race. Okay, um, so why do females usually get to be choosy? Because males are the ones with the special sexy traits, okay, like peacock feathers or mating call or something like that. So this is an example of a genetic drift, which we'll explain more in a minute. And we're going to skip this. So genetic drift is another way evolution happens, okay? Genetic drift is another way that evolution happens. The change in allele frequencies that occur in small populations by chance, not by fitness or attractiveness. Okay, so it occurs in small populations by chance. not due to fitness or attractiveness. Are we good with that part? This is an example right here showing you like, yeah, we'll go back to it, don't worry about it. Um, what would happen if you just took a few select individuals separated them and they had to repopulate. You can see that obviously at the end there's a lot more red in the ending population than there was in the starting population. And that doesn't have anything to do with the red being more fit to survive. There were just a bunch of yellows that got killed off. All right. Whoops. So genetic drift in small populations results in individuals having significant impact on allele frequency. So if you think about it, what percentage of the population would be left if one person leaves from each of the scenarios below? So if one person leaves a group of 100 people, what percentage of people are left? 99. There you go. 99, right? 99% 99 are still there. If one person in 10 leaves, how many are left? 90%, right? So you can see the bigger the population, the less effect gen genetic drift has. It works in small populations. That's something you might want to just jot on the side. Genetic drift works on small populations. So now you can fill in this handy-dandy little chart. So there are two types of genetic drift, founder effect 
and bottleneck effect. The founder effect is when some individuals of a population colonize a new habitat. Bottleneck effect is when few survivors are left to reproduce. So founder's effect. Some individuals of a population colonize a new habitat. Okay. So some individuals of a population, like Emma and Mitchell, leave for a new island. Okay, for example, Columbus bringing organisms to the USA, right? There were obviously not tons of white people running around America until Columbus was like, hey, you know what would be a great idea? If we're just mean to all these Native Americans, <laughs> right? Which he thought were Indians because he was that turned around. So here you can see in Spain, the DNA frequency is 66% pink and 33% red, right? That's kind of like our blondes versus brunettes in our example. And then a few of them were like, hey, let's get on this boat and go to South America. And it was only one pink person and three reds. So you can see the shift in the allele frequency, right? 66% pink in Spain versus 25% pink in South America. Does that make sense? A little bit. You can think of it as brown and blonde, right? 66% of the people were brunette, 33% were blonde. Then you look at South America, and now we have 25% are brunette and 75% are blonde. So it changes the allele frequency because those few people are setting up the new population. Okay? Bottleneck effect. This is an example of bottleneck effect where few survivors are left to reproduce. Example. Hurricane Katrina, so before there was 66% pink in this population, after Hurricane Katrina hit, all those little X's died, and that left a 40% pink of the survivors, okay? It drastically changed the allele frequency. So genetic drift decreases diversity. Genetic drift decreases the diversity of a species. That's the last line on the front page of your notes. It decreases the diversity of a species, okay? In this, key, in this case, the yellow and pink DNA are gone, and the red DNA is now the majority. So it is a decrease in uh, DNA diversity. I'm going to skip this because I don't think you need to know it in that much detail. And we're not doing that. And we're not doing that. And we're not doing that. Hold on. Okay, Hardy-Weinberg genetic equilibrium. We're not going to go into a lot of detail on this, but we do need to review a few uh, ideas from it. So if evolution, which you can see is in red, if evolution is the gradual change in the genetic material, our DNA, our alleles, right, of a population, then a population in which allele frequencies do not change from generation to generation must not be evolving. This type of population is said to be in genetic equilibrium. So you're either evolving or you're in genetic equilibrium. Okay? So disruption of genetic equilibrium. If a population remains undisturbed, it will not evolve because there's not really any variation going on, okay? So if a population remains undisturbed, it will not evolve. Any of these five conditions will create equilibrium and therefore result in no evolution. Here, I'll click the slide for you. 
any of these five conditions will disrupt equilibrium and therefore result in regaining evolution. Okay? Conditions will disrupt equilibrium and result back in evolution. They are, number one, mutation. Number two, gives it migration. Number three is non-random mating. Number four is natural selection. And number five is what? Anyone? Genetic drift. Excellent. Someone's still alive out there. I'm proud of you. All right. So in order for a population to not evolve, you need to think about why is this needed for the population to remain in equilibrium. All right? So take a few minutes, maybe three minutes with a partner. Try to write down your answers for each of these, and then we'll review them in a minute, okay?